What I have today for you is probably one of the most eagerly awaited sim racing wheels and very likely the most important product Fnatic has ever launched. We're talking about the PlayStation compatible CSDD, dubbed the DD Pro. If you wanted to get into the direct drive train for your PlayStation with a complete package without spending Fanatec Podium money, this video is for you. Before going there, the necessary disclaimer. The DD Pro was sent by Fanatec for review and I also have an affiliate link below if you want to help the channel out. This video was 100% independent, they are not telling me what to say and they do not know the end result of it. But anyways, take this review with a grain of salt. The CSLDD sent ripples in the sim racing industry by providing an affordable entry-level direct drive wheel with the complete ecosystem. But since then, a lot were asking for the same wheel but in a PlayStation garb. With Fanatec getting the Gran Turismo license, this was bound to happen one day or the other. Hence, now we have the DD Pro. Besides the compatibility, the Gran Turismo DD Pro differs from the regular Fanatec offerings by being a complete package that includes the wheelbase, the Gran Turismo wheel, the CSL desk clamp and the two-pedal CSL pedal set. The prices are as such, 700 euros or dollar for the 5 Newton meter bundle, 850 for the 8 Newton meter boost kit, 970 for the 180 boost kit with the load cell, these will be delivered starting March. If you want to spend 150 extra euro or dollar to get it before Christmas for the base package, you may do so, but read the fine print because that's not guaranteed. It's just a gamble. Currently, only the bundles are available. If you want to buy just the wheelbase or the GT Sport wheel, you cannot do so. But in the future, that should be an option. An option just like helping this channel out by pressing the subscribe button. The prices for the bundles are more or less the same if you were to buy each specific component separately and then add about 50 euros for GT licensing and also for the PlayStation compatibility, though it's slightly more expensive than a TGT2. And those are essentially the bad news because if you already saw the reviews for the CSLDD or the pedals or the load cell, essentially you're looking at the same exact thing but with PlayStation compatibility. From this point onwards, everything is the same as those reviews pretty much. Let's start with the steering wheel. I know, it looks like not even its mother would like it, but if you look past the lack of looks, this is actually a pretty nice 280mm wheel. There are 5 D-pads, yes we're talking about 5 D-pads, providing a total of 25 assignable buttons, then you have the regular PlayStation buttons and the shifters. Ergonomically speaking, I find the wheel flawless. With my hand size, every single D-pad is easy to reach. The X, square, triangle and circle buttons are super easy to reach as well. But the center L1, L2, R1 and R2 buttons are a little more difficult to reach. Clickwise, they're fine. They're nothing to write home about. They're about as good as the WRC wheel in terms of clicks. On the back, you'll find that this wheel comes with the CSL quick release that provides a quite strong grab. The wheelbase is essentially a block with some T-slot nut channels at the side and at the bottom. It will have 5 or 8 newton meters depending on what is bought and it is compatible with, with pretty much all that is available available in the Fanatec ecosystem, including some discontinued products. On the back, four RJ12 connectors for shifters and pedals, as well as a USB-C and a power connector is available. To mount it, it can be done through the provided desk clamp, or if you have a rig or something along those lines, just half bolt the T-slot nuts, just slide the wheel in and tighten the bolts. Nothing more, nothing less. The pedals are metal constructed and already pre-assembled in this package. They are 12-bit hull sensors and if you choose the load cell, it will have a 12-bit 60 kilo load cell. I will center myself more on the wheel part and on the bundle. If you want to see a more complete review on the pedals, check out the videos above. Let's talk about the quick release before going to the driving. Just like the CSL DD, with the CSL quick release, it works fantastic. But with the Podium releases, it will require a securing bolt as the wheel will wobble and it will have a knocking sound if you move it left to right, which kinda invalidates the quick release term. Just like the PC counterpart, this wheel is seriously impressive. The first experience I had with it was in GT Sports and I must say it was absolutely eye-opening. The four seat back is astounding in GT Sport, there's lots of details, the wheel is able to show 
how which car works in terms of suspension. A Group 3 car has a hard suspension, the front tires will bite and grab. The hard suspension is super detailed. Now you go into a road car, it shows a soft suspension with a car comparatively lazier to turn. If you buy this wheel mainly to play Gran Turismo Sport or 7 when it comes out, I can tell you you're gonna have a good time with this wheel. This was tried in both the boost pack and also in the regular 5 Newton meter. I set the course of competizione in a console though, it didn't give me any force feedback at all, so I'm not sure how to approach it. On the PC, it's exactly like the CSL DD, so we're talking about a mini DD1 here. In all cases that I've tried, the wheel loads up the force feedback and it's snappy, it's responsive, it's crisp and reliable. It has the capacity to deliver high fidelity force feedback with the loading and uncompressing of suspension in all the sims that I've tried, which were both Assetto Courses and iRacing with IRFFP. I think we will be looking back in 10 years to the CSL and DD Pro in the same way we look back at the G25. The form factor is also pretty nice, it's a chunky box, but not too long, so you can get the wheel quite close to your monitor. As for the wheel, it's super good to use, it's comfortable with almost every single button within the reach of your thumb. The clicks are okay, they're nothing special, but I found it super comfortable and it's a wheel that the size is just right for what it tends to do. If you are using the wheel on a desk, you can use it with 8 Newton meters, but I wouldn't really recommend it. The desk clamp will beg for mercy, so lower the power or get the 5 Newton meter bundle. But just like the CSLDD, I would always recommend the boost kit because it unlocks the potential of the wheelbase. At 5 Newton meters, it seems somewhat capped. Now it's time for the pedals, they are the weakest link over here, they are just serviceable, they are okay. They're precise, the pedal rates are a bit on a soft side for my taste, but they are made to be used on the floor. In GT Sport, they are actually quite nice, they are precise enough. The provided rubber has a good progressive resistance to your braking so you can feel confident. I think the CSL pedals do just that. They make you confident but they don't make you much more than that. Though some might want a stronger rubber but since these pedals are supposed to be run on the floor or on a carpet, a middle of the road choice needed to be made so you couldn't do something that was too soft that you would have trouble braking or something too hard then it would move the pedals every time you try to brake. If you are interested in load cell I think it's pretty good for what it intends to be which is an entry level load cell. The braking is super precise and the rubber even at 65 shore seems to have a good deal of resistance. The four rubber sections give just enough travel as well as a decent resistance to your braking. It doesn't leave me wanting for a harder compound when using it. Load cells are game changers for performance, so it's always recommended to get one once you have the ability. But if I had to pick one weakest link, that would be definitely the pedals, just like I said. The load cell helps to bring the potential out of the pedals, but if you just need two pedals, I think these will be enough. As a package, the DD Pro is quite interesting. It just bundles up everything that was already available for the PC and gives it a PlayStation compatibility. The prices are more or less in line if you were to buy every specific component separately and hopefully in the future we can buy the wheelbase and the wheel as standalones. It's pretty good, though I must say that this wheel is more expensive than the TG22 it replaces as the official Gran Turismo wheel. The TG22 for the same price will have better pedals and it will have more torque. Though 8 Newton meters in the direct drive especially one as smooth as this one it's something to consider but you know the price difference is still there the choice of bundles will depend where you're driving because if you're in a desk I would recommend just go for the lower bundle because too much torque on a desk it's really not that good if you're in a wheel stand or in a sim rig just go for the higher rated one because the torque difference is massive and it makes a lot of difference on the potential of the wheel since it came out I love the CSL DD and this wheel basically brings that goodness to the PlayStation if you are eyeing a direct drive consider the bundles or consider also waiting a little bit for the standalone units because I think they're worthwhile.